our morning session. I had the pleasure to introduce Professor Eduardo Teixeira from the Federal University of Ceará, who will talk about elliptic geometric regularity theory. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have here. Okay. Can I? Okay, so uh, initially I would like to thank Hermano and Felipe for putting together such a nice conference. This is the third edition of Nonlinear PDR INPA, and uh, I have the privilege to be in all of them. Okay, so today what I would like to talk about is uh, some uh, elliptic regularity theory, some uh, results on this issue. And uh, my intention is to go smoothly and slowly to, to this uh, pool of results. So I will start with a very naive question. It's quite uh, okay to ask, well, what do I mean by regularity theory, okay? So one way to put is uh, the study of universal, in, 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 and I'll explain the word universal, is smoothness properties of solutions to physical and or social models. Okay, universal means that it should hold for all, in all scales and, uh, and all solutions. Okay, so, uh, well, among many uh, physical properties or physical phenomena that uh, enjoy some smoothness uh, or regularity theory, uh, I would like to highlight that whenever we have diffusion processes, okay, it is quite natural to expect some regularity theory. And uh, let me say a little, uh, uh, one word on diffusion and second order PDEs. Okay. So let me uh, revisit one simple example, is the uh, temperature distribution in a stationary situation. So uh, if you try to understand how the temperature in this room get adjusted, well, what happens is that each particle, each point will feel the temperature of its neighbors and it will, uh, uh, average it out, okay? So the, each point will try to combine the temperature of its neighbors and uh, will have the average, okay? But every point is doing that, okay? And this is doing in all scales, okay? So it feels the temperature of its nearby and all the near uh, points feel the temperature of their nearby. So these all get together. So what we just said was that the temperature T of X of a point X is the average at every scale of T itself, okay? So this somehow is the rule that governs temperature in a stationary situation, okay? So in slightly more precise mathematical words, what I'm saying is that the T of X is uh, the average in each ball centered at a point X. Okay. And uh, it's well known that uh, asking to find a function t that satisfies this relation is equivalent to asking uh, t harmonic. Okay, so this is equivalent. So diffusion and, and second order PDEs, they are well related. Okay, okay uh, theory of elliptic PDEs. Well, elliptic PDEs appeared in many, many uh, situations, physical, geometrical, and uh, social uh, phenomena. And uh, one way to get an elliptic PDE is by energy consideration, uh, problems that come from uh, calculus of variations. So whenever you have uh, energy considerations, you end up with a, a divergence form equation, which is its linear uh, form is like this, okay? It's the divergence of a matrix Aij of x, which ha has to do with the media that the problem is modeled. And uh, ellipticity, in this sense, means uh, this, uh, that Aij is comparable to the identity by, by two positive constants. Okay, so that's... Well, elliptic PDE also appears in uh, probabilistic interpretations. And uh, whenever you have a probabilistic interpretation, in general, you end up with an operating non-divergence form, which uh, the linear, I 
linear equations like this, aij of x, d square of u. <clears throat> and again, ellipticity is the same, okay? So uh, what about the regularity theory? What, what's known about the regularity theory for solutions to, to elliptic PDEs? Well, in continuous media, let's revisit an uh, old theorem due to Schauder, it's quite classical, back in the uh, 30s, that says that if the coefficients are held or continuous for some gamma from zero to between zero and one, then solutions are C2 alpha. Okay? Solutions in, uh, in the non-divergence non form equations are C2 alpha. It's a perfect theorem. Okay? It's, it's sharp. Okay? No solution could go beyond C2 alpha. And it's sharp in the sense that gamma uh, needs to be between 0 and 1. If it's a 0, like continuous uh, uh, coefficients, you don't get a C2 solution. And also, if gamma is equal to 1, you don't get a C2-1 solution. Okay? It's, sharp in all possible sense. Equations in divergence form lacks one derivative less. Okay? So solutions in the diver divergence form equations are only C1 alpha. And again, this is optimal. This is sharp. Okay? Well, but in many problems, for instance, in nonlinear theory, you cannot assume continuity a priori. Okay? In many, many physical situations, the, for instance, if you have two materials, the uh, media is not going to be continuous, and it has been, it, it was actually a major mathematical problem to study uh, regularity in non-continuous media. And uh, this goes back to two theorems and one lesson, okay? So the first theorem, is for divergence form equations due to Gigi Orgi in 1956, where he solves the 19th Hubert problem. And uh, Nash proves the parabolic version a few years later. And uh, Moser gets his Harnack inequality, which also implies the same result. Uh, and this, more or less, this story goes from 65 to 56 to 61. Uh, 20 years passed until uh, Krilov and Safanov in 79 and, and 80 get Harnack inequality for non-divergence form. Okay? So these uh, two theorems in divergence form and non-divergence form give us one important lesson, which uh, I, I like to call the holy grail of elliptic regularity theory, which is this. Solutions to uh, elliptic PDE have a universal models of continuity. Okay, any solution. So that's that's what I mean by universal. I don't care if the uh, coefficients are regular or not, but regardless, the, the uh, a priori continuity or smoothness of the coefficients, they are all Hilder continuous by universal alpha. Okay, in particular, I have compactance and so on and so forth. And indeed, this is a nonlinear theory. Okay? This opens the possibility to study nonlinear problems. <clears throat> and nonlinear problems in divergence form has the, these, uh, this kind of form. It's divergence of a vector field A of the gradient of U. And this A behaves like the absolute value of V to the power P, P bigger than two, just for simplicity, okay? <clears throat> and non-divergence form equations. This is the theory of fully nonlinear PDEs, okay? So fully nonlinear PDE is a function F that acts on the symmetric matrix, defined on the space of symmetric matrices, and acts on the square of U. And ellipticity sort of means that, okay? So. And indeed, as I said, these, uh, these theorems of uh, De George, Nash and Moser, and Krilov Safanov are really nonlinear theories. So uh, this, this result goes back to Ureltsva in 68 that says that p-harmonic functions, that is, solutions to these 
divergence form, nonlinear divergence form equations are C1 alpha for some alpha that depends on n and p. Okay? Nobody knows which precise alpha is. And, uh, and I like to cite this work of Luis Caffarelli in 89, even though uh, through the 80s there were a lot of uh, results on fully nonlinear PDs. But uh, anyhow, the, the message here is that solutions to a fully nonlinear equation, no, no coefficients, are also C1 alpha. Okay? Basically, because uh, solutions to a fully nonlinear equation and derivatives of a solution to a fully nonlinear equation satisfies uh, a linear PD. Okay? And one key question in many, many problems is optimal regularity. What do I mean by optimal regularity? Is to know precise the best Hilder exponent of the universal regularity theory. Okay? And uh, one way to, to look, like maybe a, like a epic way to look at optimal regularity is that a, an encoded fine signature of the diffusion attributes of the PDE or the model or the problem. Okay? It's to, it tells us precisely how efficient is the diffusion of the problem. Okay? Well, in slightly more precise words, optimal regularity, it's, it's very important whenever you have to, fi to, to obtain a fine qualitative properties of solutions. It's, it's crucial in free boundary problems, in transmission problems, in geometric analysis of PDEs, in blow-up analysis. Okay? Whenever, if, if you don't know what's the optimal regularity of the problem, you cannot adjust the blow-up analysis in Liouville type theorems and so on. Okay? So optimal regularity is a very important key question in many problems. OK, so uh, now what I'd like to do is let's take a closer look at the generate elite PDs. For instance, let's look at uh, this equation, divergence of Aij, d of u to the p minus 2, d of u. So it's like the p Laplacian with coefficients. Okay? Why this a problem? Well, besides being uh, uh, nonlinear, What's, what's, why, why this theory is much harder than the linear theory? Okay? So the villain of the theory is the set of critical points. Because when, when the gradient vanishes, the ellipticity degenerates. So basically, whenever, whenever uh, uh, the gradient of u is 0, uh, the uh, diffusion attributes of the equation uh, collapses. Okay? So, and, and it, since the, the late 60s, people have been working on these uh, problems that appears in calculus of variations and many other situations, always afraid or always trying to avoid po singular points. Okay? Because at singular points, uh, solutions uh, lose their uh, regularity. In fact, solutions of the p Laplacian equation with, without coefficients are real analytic outside the critical points. Okay? So the troublemaker it has always been the critical point, and it's the villain of this theory. <clears throat> so the first theorem that I'd like to bring today is a slight like bonus for the villain. Okay? People have been. Uh, beating him to the death for over 50 years. So let's give some credit to him. So here's the first theorem that I'd like to show to you. Uh, take a weak, weak solution to this problem okay, with, with coefficients, aij. Okay, and uh, the coefficients are supposed to be elliptic, and Dini continues. It's like uh, something slightly beyond continuity. Then. At a critical point, so if you take a point in the critical set, at this critical point, u is as smooth 
as the con constant coefficient equation. Okay. So in some sense, the moral of this story here is that uh, at a critical point, the coefficient doesn't matter very much. Okay. The regularity theory will be ruled by the uh, regularity theory existent for the con constant coefficient equation. Okay. Let me explain a little bit more of this. Well, asymptotically up to C11, C11 minus, in other words. So uh, that's, that's what I was trying to say. Uh, like in barely continuous media, so the lesson is the following. In barely continuous media, solutions to a divergence form that generate the elliptic equation enjoys a much superior regularity at critical points. Okay? I'll give an example just to, to, to explain that. Okay. Well, at least for me, it came as a, it's a major surprise. I, I, would, I would bet everything against this theorem. For instance, here's a corollary, okay, which I, I don't know if it was uh, known by other methods or not, is that if you take a, a solution to a linear elliptic equation, okay, with, let's say that the coefficients are C0, 1 over 1,000, okay? It's Helder continuous, but with Helder continuity, 1 over 1,000. Okay, then we know since the 30s that solutions are C1, 1 over 1,000, okay? So this is the classical regularity theory available. However, if you take a point in the critical set, then solutions are, for instance, this is smooth at this particular point. So it's uh, several orders uh, smoother than any other point. So just to explain that, for instance, if you, in this uh, particular scenario, if you are in a regular point, the gradient behaves like a C1, C1 over 1,000 function. Like it's a very steep uh, Helder continuous function. But at a critical point, solutions are almost uh, Lipschitz. The gradient is almost Lipschitz. Okay. So you see, it's a way, the gradient is way smoother at the critical point than at a regular point. I'll try to explain why, why this happens. But before that, let's, me, uh, let, let's change a little bit the subject and let's look at so, uh, problems with source. Okay. So let's revisit the, the main brain problem. Okay. You give me uh, like some of the boundary of a domain. You define some boundary data. Let's, let's draw like this just for simplicity. And then if you try to solve the membrane problem, to try to understand how the membrane will be uh, attached to this boundary, uh, this is a very simple problem after some simplifications and linearization, you end up with the Laplacian problem. You minimize the Dirichlet integral among functions that are attached to your boundary data. But now the question is whether if I put some source, what, what happens if I put some source? So like some weight, or for instance in the, in the temperature distribution problem, you put some source of heat, okay? And uh, it's, it's interesting to understand when, when, when these sources have some, uh, some borderline conditions. So if you, if you try to solve the membrane problem, these, uh, this, the, the membrane will fill the source and then will have a slightly more complicated uh, drawing. And actually, you, what you're minimizing is this. Okay? So the order Lagrange equation associated to this functional, it's simple to see, is this. Laplacian, it's the Poisson equation, the classical Poisson equation. And just to, to explain that this is, this, it's, it's not a silly question. Well, if you try to understand the smoothness properties of a solution to the Poisson equation, you are, uh, we, well, we are driving to the study of the Newtonian potential of the source, which is this, okay? 
And this was done. It's a beautiful chapter of the harmonic analysis history, which uh, it's the theory of singular integrals. Okay, so this is done by the theory of singular integrals. Okay, so try to understand because you, you, this this kernel here, the derivative of the kernel, the second derivative of the kernel is a singular integral. Very nice. So what I'd like to show you today is uh, the uh, non-linear, non-variation of Poisson equations. Equations of this form. Uh, f, of f, f of x d square of u equals some f of x. f is the source. And it's important to understand when you have borderline conditions on the source. Okay. And uh, I'm going to call the free boundary. It's the points where the source behaves like a negative exponent of the absolute value of x. Because this is the borderline condition for integrability of x. Okay? If, if, you, if you want to understand how integrable x is around a point, so basically what you, 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 are, you have to check is how singular f is near this point. Okay? So here I show you a, a theorem that basically gives us all the uh, the spectrum of possible uh, regularity results for this Poisson problem is the following. If f is in LQ, LQ weak, if you like, and Q is between n over 2 and n, then solutions are Helder continuous, okay? only Helder continuous. And this is the optimal Helder continuity exponent. It's 2 minus n over Q. Okay? So this is optimal. And it's in accordance to the classical analysis of from singular integrals. Now, if you move Q to N, this uh, exponent here goes to 1. So the question is whether solutions when F is in LN are Lipschitz continuous. Okay? So the answer is no. It's almost Lipschitz. It's, uh, it's sort of log Lipschitz. Okay? So this is the optimal regularity for this case. Again, it's optimal. Okay? So this is a quantitative way of saying that solutions are C0 alpha for every alpha less than 1. Okay? It's, a, it's, a, it's a quantitative form of that. Well, when you pass uh, this borderline situation Q bigger than N, then solutions are, in fact, C1 alpha. And this is the optimal uh, alpha again. Okay? Of course, I, I feel at this uh, range of integrability of the source, I feel the regularity theory of, of F. So no, no solutions of this problem could go beyond uh, harmonic functions. It could not be smoother than harmonic functions. When Q goes to infinity, well, actually, this result here, it's uh, it's also in this uh, paper of Caffarelli in 89. When Q goes to infinity, solutions are not C11, as we knew. And actually, it's like the, the Haitian is, may blow up like a logarithmic. Okay. So it's like the dual result of this. Okay. It's the integral result of this. OK, what, what, now if you, if you try to put together these two results that I showed you, one question is, how about solutions, like no variational solutions, that um, degenerate at the critical points? Okay? And the degeneracy is like gradient of u to some power delta, delta for any delta bigger than 0. It doesn't need to be small. So again, the free boundary of these problems are the critical set of solution U. Okay. For instance, uh, the Pilaplacian equation can be written as a non-divergence. Any, any equation in, in divergence form can be written as a non-divergence form. You just pass the derivatives through. Okay. So it's a very vast class of solutions. So here's a theorem that we have been able to prove. Uh, joined with uh, two PhD students in Fortaleza. So assume that you have a function act, a u, that satisfies in some sense that. 
the gradient of u to some power delta times f of t square of u remains bounded. Then here is the optimal regularity. Is C1 alpha f? I could not go beyond alpha f because if gamma is equal to zero, I, I have like a fully nonlinear equation. But the, here is the, the important information: it's one over one plus delta, and this regularity is optimal. Okay, it's optimal. So the geometry of this problem is like this: you have a, a function u whose uh, some, some elliptic PDE of u blows up at the, at the critical point. And it blows up in some, some order. Okay? <clears throat> so that's, that, that's what. So the Haitian blows up. But the key information is to try to understand uh, what's the effect of this uh, blowing up has with the, the a regularity of u. Okay. So here I show you one strong consequence of this fact. As I said, since 68, it's known that p harmonic functions are C1 alpha for some alpha. And a consequence of that theorem that I just showed you is this. If you take a function h whose p Laplacian is bounded, then it implies that solutions are C1 1 over p minus 1. And this is optimal. Okay? Optimal in the con context of, solution, uh, of functions whose p Laplacian is bounded. Very quickly, let me show you uh, one, another uh, result that comes from, from these uh, kind of results. Let's visit the theory of best Lipschitz -like extensions. So you give a boundary data, f, and then you try to find the best Lipschitz ex extension of f inside d. So this best means that it's, uh, it's, local, it's a local minimum for Lipschitz norm. So the PDE approach is what it's people call the infinite Laplacian. You have to solve this infinite Laplacian equation. So this is a major open problem in, in PDE theory, is that whether uh, infinite harmonic functions are of class C1. Okay. And here are some results. It's yes. It's a result of Ovidio Savin in 2005. Infinite harmonic functions are pointwise differentiable. It's a brand new result of Craig Evans and, and Smart. But since the 60, people know that this function is infinite harmonic. So it, you could never go beyond the regularity of this function. Okay? And this function is C1 one third. But there is no, there is nothing that guides us to C1 one third. Okay? This one third P appears like a miracle in this theory of Lipschitz extensions. So here is a heuristic that explains somehow why this one third appears. If you look at the infinite Laplacian, it's like gradient, Haitian gradient. So I'm quoting here, okay, it's, there is no math in this phrase. I'm saying that uh, this infinite Laplacian equation is, has the same degree of degeneracy as this function, this, this PDE here. And from the theorem that I mentioned, I have delta equals to 2, so I have C1, 1 over 1 plus 2, C1 one third. So this more or less gives, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a proof of C1 one third regularity of infinite harmonic functions. But here I give you a theorem. It's joint with Ross and Urbano. Uh, solutions to infinite obstacle problem. They are precisely C1 one third. What do I mean by precisely? It's that it leaves the obstacle precisely as a function distance to the free boundary raised to the power four thirds, okay? And um, so this is, it, it, it's a very strong indication that maybe C1 one third is the right regularity for infinite harmonic functions, but we are still very far from proving that. Well, here I had to prove, like a, a flavor of the proof of these results, but uh, since we are out of time, I will, I will stop here. And here I, I was explaining why log Lipschitz and not Lipschitz. 
but uh, since we don't have time, I think here's a good place to stop. And uh, as usual, I, I finished inviting everybody to visit Fortaleza. Okay.